van de Super Series Finals. En de Super Series is een prestatie van zeer grote ja, Jorgens, en goede toernooien wereld. Won the gold medal at the European dus Championships de, uh, last year, while this man, Toby Penty, Toby Penty uh, didn't even compete in those list, championships. So, as I was saying, the world number two, well, he had a, a good year last year, winning two titles, not only the gold medal at European Championships in Kazan, also won one of the premier Super Series events, the highest tier of tournament, the Indonesia event, where he beat the now world champion Chen Long in the semi-final stage before beating Kenichi Targo in the final. Well, don't be misled by that world ranking of 112. He's a much, much better player than that. And you can see from his win-loss record of uh, last year, well, 11 individual tournaments, he finished the year well. He reached the final of the Welsh International, where he lost out to Kieran Merrilies, who, of course, has been playing men's singles for Scotland here in these European Mixed Team Championships. Merrilies and Scotland, of course, caused a sensation in their group, beating the defending champions, uh, Germany, a 3-2, but then Scotland lost in the quarter-final stage. Well, this will be the first meeting between these two players. They've never played each other previously, so they won't know each other's right, styles, right. but I'm sure the coaches will have done all their work. There's Jakob Hoy. Oh, very interesting. Uh, Rajiv Usif, I think, if I can see correctly, has joined Hoy on the coach's bench. And that is lovely to see. There he is. England's number one men's singles player. Obviously not fit for today's match. He's only just come back from injury worries. In fact, missed the national championships because of injury. And to see him on the coach's bench as England's team captain for the men's singles, I think Ladies is a lovely touch. On my right, England, represented by Tony Penalty. On my left, Denmark, represented by Jan O. Jorgensen. England to serve. Well, there you can see Play. the little black ribbon on the shirt there of all the Danish players, and that is as a mark of respect for the sad events in Copenhagen yesterday. Oh, my goodness, indecision there from Jan or Jorgensen. I was talking to him earlier today and well, no. he was very excited about the fact that he's had a good rest since the Super Series finals at the end of last year. He's had some One hard ball. training period. Of course, he had injury worries last year. He had a twisted ankle. Then he hurt his knee in the World Championships and then more injury problems with the ankle Two, prior to the Denmark Open and French Open and he says he's 100% fit he's rearing to go and he's played two of the previous four matches in Denmark's campaign the former world junior champion and last year's world championship bronze Two, medalist four. Victor Axelsson has played the other two matches for Denmark and as I was saying in the women's singles, the fact that Denmark has such strength in depth, they're able to rest players, they're able to spread the workload. Over. Three, two. Just long. So it's over. Three, four.
Oh, that's landed in. That's a misjudgment of that. Jano Jorgensen struggling to find his spatial awareness in these early stages. It's a couple of misjudged shots. Very first rally, if I remember correctly. Changed his mind at the last moment to play the shot when he had thought initially it was going out. In Surrey, Toby Penty. Claims to be Five, England Badminton squad's number one dancer. Now we'll look for some slick moves today during his match. Was wide. Six, five. Oh, yes, that's a lovely angle. I thought Jorgensen in the quarter-final when Denmark played against Ireland and came through that 3-1. He beat Scott Evans, the number one Irish men's singles player, in three games. He was, in fact, a game and 16-17 down in the second before having a run of five straight points to close out that second game. And then fairly comfortable in the third, 21-12. But... Not only did Scott Evans play very well, but I thought that Jan Jorgensen, not as, as aggressive as I think I've seen him in the past, in, as far as his tactics were concerned. Ten, six. Well, this is five straight points from Toby Penty. From five, six down. Now that's the sort of regression I was alluding to. Suddenly unleashing the power play. Seven is over. Seven, ten. Look at the movement there as well. Leaping in the air by the time he's landed. Having initiated the movement with a jump backwards, by the time he's landed, his body movement is coming forward in court. Well taken. The young left-hander from England. Well, we've seen shocks and surprises all week here throughout the competition. Are we about to witness another? It's been a brilliant start by the 22-year-old Toby Penty. 11-7 up 
in this opening game against the world number two. I told you not to pay any attention to that 112 world ranking. There's Victor Axelsson, who played the other two matches for Denmark, bronze medalist at last year's European Championships and also at the World Championships in his home country. Eleven seven. Play. So a four point advantage. Oh, went seven, for it again eight, at the net. Eight, eleven. Yeah, good net exchange. Nine, Control of the nets, so important. And the way that the top men's singles players now tumble the shuttle, tumble net shots off opponents, tumble net shots as demonstrated in that last rally. Really is phenomenal so skills. 12, nine. That's interesting. 12. Urging himself to up the pace and perhaps also be more aggressive. Oh, that's landed on the line. No oh, shot from Penty. 13, 11. Yeah, it's good judgment. 13, <laughs> Oh, it's cool, good. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, what very good umpiring. Overrule immediately by our umpire. There he is, Sven Suri. Yeah, that was out. Yeah, good umpiring. 
Good net shot. It's going wide. England teammates on their feet at the back of the court applauding the youngster. I don't think many people prior to the start of this match really gave uh, Toby Penty any hope of pushing the world number two. He's not only pushing him, he's leading. He's got a three-point advantage. Yeah, you've got to go for those tight, tight net shots and inevitably in trying to play perfection there will occasionally be errors. Just don't worry about it. Oh. 15, idea but he's struggling to control the length of the shuttle from that far side of the court is Jan Jorgensen lost count of how many he's hit long of that back line Aggressive play. Brilliant. Well, it was an early step forward. This one here. That was the one that changed the whole momentum of the rally. Great anticipation. Good courage, too. To that good commitment in the previous rally, a little bit lazy in that one. No, back level 18 all. And I think it's more important for Penty to win the opening game than it is for Jorgensen. Run of three straight points from the Dane to go into the lead. fist game yeah the crucial moment he's found his range he's now four straight points oh good flick serve too yeah coming from behind 
Five straight points to close out the opening game. And there's a very, very good reason why uh, Jan Jorgensen is the European champion and so highly ranked in world terms. Career high of number two. Responds in the pressure situation. And he responded with class. Yeah, he's a tall athlete, isn't he, Penty? I've always thought of Araji Fusif being a very tall, but Tony Penty, every bit as tall. It's 1 metre 91, that's 6 foot 3. In fact, he might even be a fraction taller than Usif. That is so good to see the England number one encouraging, advising, and helping the younger player. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Starting this second game as he finished the first, Jorgensen. Yeah, there must be a little bit of a drift in this arena. I was pondering that fact yesterday. Came to the conclusion there really wasn't much in it. But it does seem today that uh, shuttle flying a little bit quicker coming towards us. When you take into account the five straight points to close out the opening game, along with uh, the first five points of this second game, that's ten straight points without reply in favour of Jorgensen. And this is why I felt it was so important, far more important, uh, for Penty to win the opening game than uh, the importance for this man. Penty, having been in the lead and... Having played so well in game number one, there's always a danger for the underdog to think, well, yeah, here we go. I'm not sure I can beat him. Now, no player will, of course, admit to that, but somehow in the back of your mind, that's what you think. Yeah, that rally will do the left-hander a world of good. the line 
Well, Toby Penty gives the line judge a long, hard look. To say, I thought it was a... Oh, that was a great call. That was clearly on the line. Magnificent placement. Yeah. And full flow in that rally. Jorgensen. Definitely more aggressive Jan Jorgensen in this second game. More attacking play. And look at the follow-up. First the smash straight down the line, but because he knows and he can see that he's hit a good smash and his opponent is at full stretch, he knows that the only possible reply would be a straight block and therefore immediately dashes forward cover the reply So really stamping his authority on this men's singles now. The reigning European champion, Jan Jorgensen. Look at the confidence oozing as he plays that backhand cross court. nicely played I like the attitude of Toby Penty come into this match of course he's the underdog but the way he's approached the match is very impressive indeed
Yeah, and it's good also to hear the English teammates still supporting, still encouraging. It's got a mountain to climb. Yeah, just one point at a time. such clever play it's not full power it's just concentrating on the angle look at that and Penty at full stretch character is Jan Jorgensen with his long hair yeah and it really is long tied up in his ponytail his body art his long stockings <laughs> yeah, it's good for the sport Yeah, well, I was saying earlier about the attitude of young Toby Penty, the way he's approached the match. I'm also liking the fact that uh, despite being a 13-4 down at uh, one stage, that he's still fighting. Every single rally, every single point. The odds of him winning this match from this position are fairly slim, but... I do like a player that just refuses to give up. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, what do you do against that? Oh, well, it came off the frame of the racket, that one. Completely missed time from Jorgensen. Mm, pity the serve in the net from Penty. Just two points away now. Jorgensen from uh, giving Denmark a two-love lead in the final of these European Mixed Team Championships. Oh, good defence. Yes, well played. Another example of the fighting spirit. Look how quickly it gets up and then the 
awareness. I don't know where the gap was, where he should be aiming his winning shot. So after just 32 minutes of play, Jan Jorgensen with seven match point opportunities. Yeah, nice disguise on the slice drop shot there from Jan Jorgensen. And his victory complete and a nice acknowledgement there from the reigning European champion. The pat on the back for his young opponent, acknowledging how well he fought and how well he played. But uh, Jan Jorgensen showing his class. When under pressure, when behind in that opening game, 11.15 behind he was at one stage. He then upped his pace, upped his intensity. And from that moment on, he was a different player. Uh, yeah, I saw him a bit in the, in the first set, especially in the beginning. Uh, yeah, I think Toby really did well in the in the start of first set, and uh, and I had to, you know, fight my way into the game. And uh, and when I first got the rhythm, uh, I felt quite comfortable. So their confirmation uh, that Denmark are a two love in the lead in this best of five match uh, final, one of each discipline, of course, for the mixed team championships. And with both the singles won by Denmark, this is now a very, very tall order for England because the next match on court uh, features more reigning European individual champions in the form of Christina Pedersen and Camilla Aruti Yul. Yeah, and, uh, welcome. And uh, if it was soccer, it was, it was like a game of two halves. The good, not so good, Jan, at the very beginning, and uh, the good Jan at the end. You just took a little bit of time to figure Toby out, maybe. Yeah, and and to be honest, I can win this game in many ways. And uh, and when I saw the draw this morning, I knew that, uh, that I really had a really good chance of winning this one. Uh, also by playing in different styles, and uh, and yeah, I took it a bit too easy in the beginning, to be honest. Um, it's not good enough, but that's how it is. Uh, I, uh, Ratif is their strongest player, and I, uh, in my mind, I had prepared for him, so uh, so I had to to re uh, what do you say reset everything, yeah. and uh, yeah, that took one game. 
Is that sometimes a difficult thing for a, a world's top five player to uh, keep the level high when you're playing players that maybe not ranked as high? Uh, yeah, you, not really. Um, Toby's playing in a different way that uh, I'm used to, uh, and he was actually kind of tricky in the beginning, uh, the left hand, and, uh, and uh, also credit to him. Uh, don't want to stand here and just, uh, just uh, brag about how, how bad I played myself, because he did well, I have to say that. Uh, so also respect to him for, for, for really trying in the first set. Uh, when I got comfortable in the second set and I, and I got my, well, 2-4, two, 4-2 four, four, two lead in the first, uh, second set, I knew I had it, so, and he knew that as well, so, yeah. Two years ago, we saw maybe a slightly overconfident and, and cocky Denmark, maybe, okay? This year, it seems to be a lot more focus about this Danish team. It's like, you certainly come here to do business and take no prisoners. Yeah, again, I want to say I wasn't on the team no, two years cool. ago. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. Um, we have uh, we've talked about uh, this cannot happen again. Uh, we are the strongest team if you look at the list. And we also need to be it here here when we're together, everybody, and and, and that's uh, that's also uh, that can be uh, be tough to to prove. And uh, and we're just here to take every game serious and and to f really focus throughout the tournament. I think we have done that. Yeah, it's certainly for sure you've done that. You can expect the girls to win this. Uh, everyone expects them to win it, and you be, should be celebrating with the trophy. Uh, that's a fair comment to make. Uh, yeah, if you look at the, the competition in Europe, uh, they must be actually our, our, our strongest uh, pairing uh, compared to all the other categories. Uh, all Europeans uh, have tough, tough, tough uh, players, but in, in ladies' double, there is only Camilla and Christina, so I'm quite sure they will take the, the last game. Yeah, and thanks for joining us. Well played, and uh, let's go out and watch the girls, see how they do. Well done. Thank you.